Hello, uh, and welcome to Rampant Pyanodon Season 4, Episode 11. Last episode, I promised progress towards the season goal, Inner Metallics, but in typical vanilla ice cube fashion, there is something I would like to squeeze in before that. Electric boilers. Ah, so as it turns out, the electric boilers turn water into steam, uh, the way that boilers turn water into steam. I did a little experiment here to see if it was net positive with power generation using uh, steam engines, but it is not. Its only real use right now is actually to conserve space because it outputs 50 steam per second, whereas normal boilers output is 7.5 steam per second, so it's 6.66 times uh more steam with a relatively similar footprint. Well, that's a shame, but it's all right because we can go ahead and move on to the main point of the episode, and that is Vitalroy. Uh, Vitalroy is one of the two ingredients for inner metallics and has five ingredients antimony oxide, duralumin, nickel plate, titanium plate, and copper plate. We are going to start with nickel plate, which means we need nickel ore, which means we need singus, because we need dedicated singus to mine the nickel ore. Let's get started with that. Um, yeah, Singus was, um, a pretty easy build. Anyways, let's go ahead and just it into the world, connect up the Singus to the mine, and then we can move over to the Nickel Plate build. Okay, so Nickel Plate was a relatively simple build. It only had two parts. It's the jaw crushers to turn the Nickel Ore into Nickel or grade one, and then the advanced foundries to turn the nickel grade one into tin plates themselves. I really wanted to go for 15 plates per second, but I had to settle with just five, because if I wanted 15 plates per second, I would have needed 150 advanced foundries and 45 jaw crushers. Uh, and then I, I did take a quick look at my world and I realized, you know, lo and behold, uh, my world was not big enough uh, for this. So I, I, I kept it relatively simple again, just keeping it small. Uh, until I have my, my trains and bots, I can't really build too large. So I kept it small for now. So uh, we have 50 foundries and 50 jaw crushers, which produces about five nickel plates per second. I spent a lot of time testing this one. I, you can tell that I kind of go AFK and make a couple changes every once in a while. The design is pretty basic. I don't know why I squiggled the lines out at the end, but uh, this is what we have for nickel plate. Right, we go into the main world and then we can just this into place and then we can work on the second ingredient uh, that we don't have so we didn't have nickel or antimony oxide we just finished nickel next up we're going to work on antimony oxide and to work on antimony oxide we need to work on dedicated plastic production so let's get to it Okay, so when I first started the build, I actually spent some time doing the recipe, and this is where I think I've shown some growth as a player mindset-wise. Spoken quite a long time. Maybe I'll just speed this up or something. So anyways, let's just go ahead and get to the aromatics build. Uh, aromatics build is really simple. We just use destructive distillation columns to turn tar into clay, flue gas, carbon dioxide, and aromatics. Uh, I kind of just paste 13 of these. This is enough for 10 plastic per second. There is a major flaw with my build, and it is that it needs about 1,700 tar per second, and pipes only support 1,200. Um, but I... I'm too lazy to fix it, so this is just going to be how it is for now. Okay, we're going to jump straight into plastic, which is very simple. We just put 15 of these bio factories down, and they take Singus and Aromatics, and out comes plastic. So I just paste 15 of them to make 10 plastic per second. This test isn't working because I placed my pipes down really crudely and uh, every time a pipe bends the fluid throughput drops so I'm just going to assume that if the fluid throughput was right that this would work. So we can go back into our main world, plop down our aromatics build and our plastic build, connect them up, let them run, uh, check it off our list and then we can begin working on antimony oxide. Attacks on the fish gate by brutal biters uh, have been on the rise, so I've upgraded the outer walls. Uh, they look way more flimsy, low-key, like way more flimsy. 
but they have double the health, more damage reduction, and damage resistance, so they are better. All right, so Antimony Oxide. Really wanted to start with 15, then my goals dropped to 10, and even five. If you wanted to do five Antimony Oxide per second, that would take over 200 buildings. So even, even our low goal of 2.5 Antimony Oxide ended up taking over 100 different buildings, which is fine. Antimony Ore is the first ore we have available where we have all four grades or four different grades available. So from here, we start from ore, then we go to Antimony Grade 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, and generally when I build these builds, I kind of have the like a bus that goes throughout the entire thing. But this time we only have, we don't really have a bus. It's just Antimony Ore that goes in the center and it goes through like four or five layers of, of processing before it gets spit out as uh, Antimony Grade 4. And then we combine the Antimony Grade 4 with plastic, oxygen, and fuel in the oxygen furnaces to get our 2.5 Antimony Oxide per second. We also have three byproducts, gravel, stone, and iron oxide. They do tend to build up just a little bit, um, but I haven't seen it affect the the production so i think this should be fine and, and this is our antimony oxide build it's very square like uh someone complimented my decorations the other day on the discord server so i was like oh, okay maybe i'll give this one a little bit more effort so instead of just doing the normal uh, refined concrete with the uh the coal gravel on the outside i also do a little bit of iron oxide just uh go back to my roots but not too not too hard because I, I do want to keep things moving but uh, I said a lot of words right there. This has been the Antimony Oxide build. Uh, and of course, the next step is to zip, zap, zip, zap, zip, zap, zap this in our world. Obviously, we need to supply the antimony ore with antimony ore mines using antimony drills. What wasn't obvious was that the antimony drills required fuel canisters. Uh, so I kind of had to build this fuel canister thing. Thankfully, it was the same as the barreler, so I was just able to copy and paste it. The fuel canisters are made of steel and plastic. I placed plastic all the way on the other side of the base because I didn't expect it to need it here. Um, but uh, I've dragged plastic all the way over here and canisters work the same as fuel barrels where they just fill them up and we can empty them and reuse the containers. Okay, and now that the antimony oxide is done, we can check it off our list and finally work on the goal for the episode, Beat, beat Leroy. Uh, beat Leroy, uh, we're unfortunately going to have to produce, again, such a small amount. Uh, we're targeting only two Beat Leroy per second, which takes 10 smelters. This takes three antimony oxide, three duralumin, three nickel, three aluminum, and three copper plates per second, plus liquid fuel. Liquid fuel is pretty simple. We just kind of use our barrelers uh, that we've been using, basically taking the fuel barrels and putting them into the barrelers to use whatever we have available. As you can see, the build was done pretty quickly but the troubleshooting was about three-fourths of the time so i had to go ahead and just kind of move everything around and, and get it shifting um I, I put another belt on and then i removed it and then i added it back at the very end uh just because it wasn't working exactly the way i needed it to uh because I, I didn't have enough fuel coming in through the barrels but at the end i did so we have four belts now one full belt for the barrels and then everything else comes in from a half belt but all in all a pretty simple build um, i may need to flip it upside down and i'm afraid that may take some work but otherwise i think this build is good to go and we can go ahead and port it over to the world at this point you should already know what's going to happen next i'm just going to this into the world and it is not running unfortunately because we are out of both the and aluminum because my uh, excess sushi belt line is full of ash and rocks and gravel and it is uh it is stuck so let's go ahead and unstuck that real quick and by unstuck it i really mean unstucking it for next episode because i realize i'm at the end and i'm going to close it off here I'm still saying a lot of words. It's been a while since I've been recording, so I've, I've started, I've, I'm still talking. I need to stop talking. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the episode. I'd like to thank all my patrons. John Moy, I forgot my patrons. Where are they?
John Boy, Ima, Sterling, Zark, Simple Anglerfish, and Hollow. Thank you, and I will see you guys in the next episode.